the Sonic 8, 1977 Earlton Bowler. And uh, I'd like to go over some of the features of this trailer. Um, everyone who has a bowler, or any fiberglass trailer, has little features that have been done over the years from previous owners. I've made a few uh, unique uh, features to this bowler, which I'd like to go over in this video. Now on this, uh, this particular trailer, these particular tires, uh, it's always best to uh, have a look at the uh, uh, maximum tire pressure on the, on the tire. This particular brand of tire, the maximum uh, inflation is uh, 44 uh, pounds per square inch. Now, I tend to want to make sure that I don't put that at maximum because uh, summer driving, uh, your tires will heat up and the inflation, uh, the inflation rate will uh, increase anywhere from 6 to 8 pounds. So when you're uh, inflating your tires, it's best to, uh, well, I keep it about 38 pounds, leaving uh, uh, 6 or 7 pounds uh, for expansion rate. So it's good to have uh, one of these to check and check your PSI levels. So as you can see, uh, this bowler comes with, uh, with uh, front and back uh, rock guards and uh, there is a locking function on this. I recommend uh, when you're on the road traveling with it that the, uh, the hatch is locked and you can lock it with a key also to make sure the vibration doesn't affect it. And to uh, put the supporting feature in, it's just a matter of lifting the door and taking this uh, piece of uh, pipe, yellow pipe, placing it on top of the, uh, of the bracket here and simply resting it underneath the uh, rock guard. Just a word on Jalousie windows. Uh, the crank system on all the windows, uh, you have to watch that so you don't over tighten them. Uh, they have a gear inside that that can wear down uh, if it's if it's uh, tightened too much. And uh, when you're opening up the jalousie windows, there's a vinyl strip which helps keep the water out. You may find that sticks a little bit, and it's best to open it up, apply a little bit of pressure, and then wait just a couple of seconds for the uh, for the strip to uh, release itself. There it is open. And again, you want to make sure you don't apply too much pressure to the crank. If for any reason you need to take the spare tire uh, off uh, this bowler, uh, this is a hard uh, shell uh, fiberglass tire cover. And you just need to release the bolt, the wing nut here. Uh, the back is built with just a little bit of a flange uh, to come off the tire. You, you will need to spread it just a little bit. Uh, the fiberglass will give a little bit, uh, not a lot, but it will give enough for the tire cover to come off. So for a battery, battery hookup, uh, a bowler comes with a deep cell battery. It's recommended that you use deep cell, not a car battery, because you need to recharge it. And car battery, of course, uh, if it goes uh, if it goes dead, you can't recharge it. Uh, so <coughs> over here we have uh, um, a wire with a fuse on it that will be your positive uh, terminal. And here on the cable, which comes from your uh, uh, disconnection of your car, there's uh, a negative. Uh, adapter I guess which you plug in and simply attach with the alligator clip to your negative and you're all set to go with your interior lighting system. So for uh, the fridge it's just a matter of removing uh, two screws take your panel off 
uh, here's your uh, your gas shut off. That would be on. That would be off. You want it in the off position if you're going to be on uh, on <coughs> service site electric power. And uh, that is a matter of turning this switch to 110 volts. You'll see a small red indicator. Make sure that's there. Uh, and then you can plug uh, plug the bowler into your electrical site, and that will uh, run your fridge. To uh, to go to gas, you turn the dial so that there is a uh, a slot at the top, and that allows you to uh, to turn the gas on. And over here is where you light your pilot. And there's a blue button that you push up to get the gas to start to light. And you can hear the pilot light going. Hold that for 30 seconds to a minute. And by the way, I recommend that you don't keep the uh, the pilot light going when you're uh, when you're hauling the trailer. Now, if the pilot light uh, goes out, it just means there's a little bit of a gas bubble. You may have to uh, do the process again until it holds its light, and uh, and that's it. That pilot light heats this unit up, activating, I guess, the Freon. Um, and keeps your fridge uh, keeps your fridge cold. It does need about two hours to get up to temperature. So recommend when you get to your campsite, if you're going to be on propane off grid, get this lit up. Um, keep your perishables in a cooler with ice until this uh, gets uh, fridge gets up to temperature. And there's the pilot just inside, burning away best to close this little hatch to keep the wind out and of course when uh, it's, uh, you're getting ready to leave your campsite and shutting things down you can turn your propane off at the front of the trailer make sure that this gas valve here is out and we see that uh, that shuts off the pilot and you'll probably hear a small click in about 30 seconds which means the uh, safety valve automatically shuts itself off. Now I've never uh, I've never needed to uh, play with those uh, dials at all. Um, I keep it on the coldest that it can um, it's probably best not to move those. I don't think you have to. It's just a matter of uh, getting your pilot going and that's about it. And once again I'd like to recommend uh, that you don't have the gas on on your trailer or the pilot um, set uh, going when you're traveling in the trailer. It's not safe. It's best to make sure that uh, your pilot lights are lit when you get to your campsite if you're in a non-service site. Now the 12 volt system has been deactivated on this particular trailer largely because um, while many previous owners disconnect that they don't use it they use uh, the 110 volt for service sites uh, or the uh, or the propane gas. The, the big issue with the 12 volt system is uh, running your fridge for three, four, five hours will uh, will do a lot of draining on your battery. So it's just not a functional system. The furnace, just a matter of re removing the cover and removing the uh, access to the pilot light and burner and have a lighter on hand. The red knob has uh, three settings uh, pilot and uh, off and on so pilot is in the center so it's a matter of pushing in and turning the red knob so 
so that the pilot is on the top and then have your lighter ready just off to the left side is your pilot light so you just need to push in the red knob and hold it again for several seconds so that it stays on and then turning the system to on which again is pushing in and turning to the on position and in 30 seconds 45 seconds it will uh, light the burner now this doesn't get extremely hot it uh, can take a little bit of the chill off but uh, it's not uh, something that will really warm up a bowler on a really cold day that's for sure but it's helpful and there's our burner inside has now become activated and then turning off the system just a matter of pushing in and turning all the way to off and you see that the flame goes out and again in a few seconds you'll hear a, a click meaning that the safety valve has turned off and of course I recommend recommend putting your cap when you when you have your uh, your uh, furnace go uh, finally going put your cap back on make sure that uh, any CO2 is not leaking out uh, I highly recommend having some sort of a CO2 sensor in your bowler just to make sure that there are no fumes and uh, inside here right next to the fireplace or the fire the furnace is uh, this is the cord that uh, goes into your uh, into your refrigerator and down here is a uh, fuse box with a 15 amp fuse and a and a sh uh, on and off switch uh, and in the back of the compartment is where uh, uh, all of your electrical cord can pull out and go back into the bowler and we built this little shelf here so my wife could it's perfectly <laughs> perfectly uh, sized for uh, a box of wine for stove top very simple here are your two uh, uh, regulators on and offs uh, they're very sensitive uh, you have to turn them very uh, very uh, gently because uh, you will get either a lot of flame or it'll go out so you need to be sort of ginger with how much you uh, um, turn these um, have your lighter ready and there they go now I recommend when you're cooking to make sure that you have your food prepped and your pots and pans cooking utensils ready um, you don't want to keep these burning without a plate or, uh, sorry without a pan or a pot on top because the heat that rises is very warm and can uh, warp um, or destroy the top of this uh, fiberglass so putting pots and pans on before you start uh, before you start cooking is the best thing and there is a window here <coughs> so that you can uh, let cooking fumes go outside and that's that and refrigerator uh, of course um, when you start up your refrigerator you can al always monitor whether it's uh, it's working properly or not this is the uh, cooling unit uh, it'll freeze, it'll make ice cubes, you can put uh, uh, eventually your frozen food items in this compartment but this is a unit that gets cold and it'll frost up a little bit um, which, is, uh, which is what you want but this is what cools the fridge so when you start up your fridge you can always uh, just touch that to, uh, 
get a sense of uh, whether everything's working properly. And again on propane it may take a few hours for this to come up to temperature. Uh, significantly quicker when you're on uh, on a service site with electricity. Now inside the closet are uh, two switches. The one at the top is uh, a switch that will turn on the outside uh, dome light of the trailer which is 12 volts so when your battery is hooked up or your interior lighting is hooked up uh, switching that on will put your outside porch light on. There is another switch a little lower in the closet. That's a switch for 110 uh, light bulb uh, that's also in the outside porch light. So there's two lights in there, a 12 volt and um, one for 110 volts. So if you're on a service site, rather than wasting your battery with an outside porch light, you can always switch this on if you're plugged in and it'll light up the outside. And with your, uh, with your battery connected outside uh, for your 12 volt interior lighting system uh, and the kitchenette there's a dome light which has two functions. Uh, one is a night light and one is a bright light for cooking. And then also there are two lights on each end of the uh, counter with a switch <laughs> wherever it is there it is with a switch there and one to the left of the kitchen counter there we go